did you want to get there? Questions. Coach, after looking at the at the tape, and how would you assess your team's defensive performance in the yeah, you know, um, after tackling really well in week one, I didn't think we tackled as well um, in week two. Um, I think that was that was pretty obvious. Um, and then on top of that, we just we just made some mistakes, made some things more difficult than they needed to be, especially early in the game. You look at our first half statistics compared to our second half statistics. Uh, it wasn't even close. But I think the biggest thing that it really came down to was tackling. There's some things that we've had to clean up um, you know, with the technology about what is best for Penn State and using the technology on the defensive side of the ball and at home. Um, what are the best ways to use that, whether we're using the mic system um, and, and some, of the, some of the things that you got to work through by doing that, especially at home uh, with the noise. I think that factored in. Um, and then you know we had a couple bumps and bruises, so we had some moving parts that caused us some issues on defense and on special teams. But obviously the, the bye week came at a really good time to kind of spend some time working through some of these things, uh, get some things cleaned up. But I think the biggest issue is we didn't tackle as well. James, will there be any internal can I Can I say one more thing? Yeah. The only other, the only other thing is, um, you know, the sacks. We've been more disruptive in the past, but just like I thought after watching that tape, their whole game plan was not to allow us to get sacks. It was quick game, it was run game, it was move the pocket. They weren't holding on to the ball. So, um, you know, in a lot of ways, that's going to factor in a great deal with your production. The other thing that factored into that is we didn't play well in the first half where if you play well in the first half and the score gets out of whack, then they have to break their game plan and how they want to play, and then that's usually when the sacks come. So both, both of those things. Would there be any internal punishment for Amin after he was charged? Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I think you guys know that have covered us for a long time. I don't know if there's been very many times, if any, that I've talked about um, internal, um, internal punishments that we've had. We, we've released a statement on it, um, but I, I, think, I don't think there's been many times where I've actually told you guys what the internal punishment was going to be. James, how would you assess the play of the offense through two games, and are there areas where you think, uh, specific areas where you think you can get even better because, because you've been productive, but how can things kind of expand maybe? Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest thing to me is third down. And the reason I say that is it, it really goes hand in hand with all of our things that we need to get cleaned up on offense. So what I mean by that is back to the first half, right? Our defense, there's extended drives. Our offense is not. We're either scoring or going three and out a lot of times. So what happens is the play count is out of whack. We're not getting enough plays. You've heard me talk about balance. Part of balance is not just running and being able to throw the ball in every situation. It's spreading the field 53 and a third. It's also getting touches for guys. We, we don't have enough opportunities to get enough guys touches because we're not sustaining drives. Defensively, we've got to get off the field. Our rep count is way up right now on defense. Um, and our rep count needs to be higher on offense. We get 10 more plays in the first half. We don't have a hold on third down you know, and we convert that third down or we don't drop the ball on third down, that may equal another six drive, six plays. We do that two more times, you're talking 10 to 15 plays in the first half. You talk about over a game, that creates more opportunities and more touches, and we want to be able to spread the wealth. That's us as coaches, but that's also the players going out and executing so that we can stay on the field. I, I think that's that will resolve a lot of issues, our efficiency, are spreading the ball for touches, our third down percentage. Obviously, the more we're on the field, there's more opportunities to score points, and it keeps our defense off the field. So a lot of, lot of reasons. We're, we're much more explosive. Um, that's not a question, um, but we got to get these other things cleaned up. To that James. point, did you get enough reps from the second and third team guys in this game, and will that be a priority headed into Kent State? Uh, we got to win. You know, we, we got to win. Um, you know, having that conversation or talking that way is just not something that, that we necessarily do. Um, I'm more comfortable talking about past games and future games, but yeah, we would love to play really well. Um, you know, get the rep count and the ball distribution the way we'd like it to be, and then get other guys on the field and get our guys out. Um, we were not able to do that this, this past Saturday.
James, we didn't see Bradley today. Is there any update regarding whether that's a long-term? Yeah, that's a long-term injury. James, what did you think when you had a chance to go back and look at the way Nolan Ritchie played on Saturday and kind of some of those other guys that we didn't see as much of? Them? Yeah, he did, he did some good things. We had we had a plan for a rotation to get those guys some more reps, and then the game doesn't go the way you want it to go in the first half, and you're scratching and clawing. Um, and we were able to get him in the second half and did some good things. We need more of that. You know, we gotta the coaches have got to play guys. Uh, we need to, you know, continue to build uh, depth. We've had more bumps and bruises than this year than we've had in the last couple of years. Three years ago, we had a decent spike um, in some bumps and bruises, and we got that right now. So we got to develop depth. Uh, that that's going to be really, really important for us moving forward. We got to play them. Do you find value in winning a game where you didn't play very well early in the season? Do you find value in coming at least away with that win? Yeah, I mean. Obviously, that's not what you want to hear. That's not what, what anybody wants to hear. But yeah, I think I got a bunch of coaches and ADs re reaching out to me about those types of things. Um, the staff, we've talked about it. I mean, you're going to have to win a ton of different ways throughout the year. Um, there's going to be games where you blow people out. There's going to be games where you're on the road scratching and clawing for every point you can get. There's going to be games where um, you know, you're on the road, you're dealing with weather. There's, there's a ton of different ways. Um, and we're going to have to find multiple ways to win games. That was one of them this Saturday. I'd, I'd, I'd love for it to be different, but I do think there's some values of, you know, having the grit to battle through. Um, you guys saw, you know, winning is hard. Uh, I know you guys are just like us. You're in the Penn State submarine. You don't watch any other games. You don't see any other games. But there's some people that would have loved to have an ugly win all over the country. And um, you know, we'll take as many of them as we can get. Um, I, I prefer that uh, we can play in a way that, that we can build the confidence that we need going into Big Ten play and, and get a ton of guys reps and, and, um, and, and still be able to clean up some of the mistakes. But, but yeah, I think there's some value in winning these types of games. James, we heard from some players in a post game on Saturday that they learned something about Tom Allen and seeing him encountered with that situation at halftime. I'm curious what maybe you learned about your new defensive coordinator coming out of the game, not just in the moment of halftime, but I'd imagine as you kind of regathered each, uh, yourselves here at the facilities and went through the zone. Well, I think there's 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 um, you know, there's been a ton of opportunities to be around Tom and the type of man he is, the type of coach he is, the type of person he is, the relational leader, how he's developed relationships with our players on a very, very significant level. Um, and then, like you're saying, you have the West Virginia game, which I thought defensively we played very, very well, especially when you compare it to the year before. Uh, and then last year, I mean, last game, you know, we faced some adversity that we probably didn't anticipate. The adjustments we made, how we handled it. Uh, and then you're also talking about transitioning back from being a defensive coordinator to being a head coach for seven years and then going back into that role. And then on top of that, college football has changed this year with the technology and, and how you use all those things. So I think talking to a lot of buddies all over the country, there's a lot of people working through how to use the technology and how it impacts you. Um, but I think, I think Tom's doing a, doing a really good job. This week's going to be a really important week for our staff. Um, and I think it's going to be a really important week for the players. Uh, and then to go in the next week, um, really with a lot of these things kind of cleaned up. Hey, James, how do you practice for contingencies? So you obviously have a plan A for everything, but then probably a plan uh, B and C. How do you carve out time to practice those things without taking too much away from wanting to do the first thing? Well, I think the first thing is that's why in practice – you rep the ones and the twos and sometimes the, the threes because they're going to have to be developed. They're going to have to be ready to play. It's no different than having some of the scrimmage stuff that we do on Sundays. You got to develop those guys. They got to play. Um, but then it's also what's great about our game is there's so many scenarios to cover. So the scrimmages are really important. When we do offense versus defense, two-minute drill, or whatever the situation may be, there's a ton of situations that come up that you necessarily can't always plan and organize for. They just kind of come up organically. So um, that's how we do that during training camp. But we also do that during the season. Typically on Tuesdays, we did it today, uh, where we'll do two-minute against each other. We'll have a different two-minute situation typically each week. Um, and that's a great way to do it. Um, and we'll usually take at least 10 minutes of going good on good every day. Wednesday, we'll do third down or red zone, and that's helpful with that. Um, 
So that's probably the biggest way. Um, and then obviously, you know, all the stuff that you're preparing for on, on tape that you've seen of your opponent without chasing too many ghosts. Two more guys. James, have you seen Eagle step up in some ways given that he's one of the older guys on the defense? And he's also adjusting to not having Cam in that teammate. Just wondering how you've seen him step up this season. Yeah, you know, he's a veteran guy that's been here and played a ton of football for us and, and now is in a, in a much more significant leadership role. Um, you know, he's a guy that's earned everybody's respect in terms of his teammates and the coaches and staff um, and kind of just has evolved into that vocal leader that maybe he wasn't two years ago. Um, obviously, your point, I think, is a good one. You know, he lost his brother who he'd been with, you know, all through high school and then all through college to the, to the NFL. Um, but I also would make the argument now after being here as long as he's been here, he's got, you know, 124 brothers in that locker room that he's very, very close with and, and very well respected kind of throughout the locker room. So uh, he's doing really well and we need him to be, you know. Um, you know, like we've talked about before, about being strong up the middle with your D tackles and your safeties and your and your middle linebackers really important. Jay, hey, coach, what's been your assessment of Zane Durant so far? Um, I think he's playing very, very well. We had kind of strong belief in what he was going to be able to do this year. He practices like that every single day. He's super consistent. Um, he's got bigger and stronger and more explosive. He loves football. Like, I think that's one of the things that's so important in today's day and age. You, you better recruit guys that love football and not love what comes with football. They love football. Um, don't like football and love the things that come, come with it. He's a guy that loves ball he, and he loves everything that comes with it. The, you know, the, the strength and conditioning, the summer running, the winter workouts. He understands it's all part of the process and he embraces it and he literally day in and day out punching his ticket and is consistent. So he's a great example that we use all the time uh, with really our whole team and specifically our D-line. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thank